I want you to know that I believe everything that God says. Amen? And God says that Christians ought to uh, be involved with Christians, that we are to be yoked with Christians. Now, that's true in marriage. That's true in business. That's true in social life and every other arena that is a part of your world. And if you want to stay out of trouble, just do what God says. And when God says that you're to find you a Christian woman or a Christian man, that's what you ought to do. And if God says you don't go into business deals with unbelievers, then you don't do that. And if God says that you don't go to parties uh, with unbelievers, you don't do that. What happens if you do? My friend, I've watched it for a long time now, and I've seen people who have gotten into business arrangements with unbelievers, and the Christian always ends up the loser. You know why? That crowd is scheming. That crowd knows what they're doing, and they're setting a trap for you all the time, and they'll end up taking the money and running, and you're going to be left behind wondering where it went. And uh, you do so socially. You go out and you're going to party with them. Hey, they know when you say party, you mean you're having fellowship. When they say party, they mean they're going to get drunk and do a lot of other stuff. And so you're going to have, find that your testimony is besmirched and you're going to find that temptation is put in your pathway and people won't know any difference between you and that other crowd if you're out there with them. Be not unequally yoked. Now that's not the sermon, but it's pretty good. Just go ahead and take that for whatever it is and apply it to your life. And so he says, don't take one among the yokel, uh, the yokels, the locals. Yeah, the yokels too. <laughs> oh, mercy. God help me. <laughs> so, so he went out to search for a bride. He makes his journey from one country to another country, and he's going, as I've already said, he's going among people that he does not know, going to a place that he doesn't know exactly where it is, but he's got a task, and that's to find a bride. Now, if you were asked to do that, what would you do? Would you call the Chamber of Commerce and say, I'm coming to your town? Would you get on the hotline and call a psychic and ask them to guide you? Here's a guy that knows, and by the way, he is a man of faith just like his master is a man of faith. And the Bible says that as he makes his journey, he is praying while he's going. Now, if you want to know which way to go, folks, get on your knees and start searching the Word of God. Seek for God. Let God speak to your heart. God will direct you. God reveals Himself through the Word of God. God reveals Himself through the Spirit of God. God reveals Himself by experiences that come to your life and through the words of others that God puts in people's mouths to speak. And God will not leave you in the dark. He'll guide you if you'll seek for His direction for your life. And so this man says that I'm on a journey and I don't know what I'm doing. And look at verse 14 as he's praying as the women are coming out to draw water. Now notice that there's not just one woman, but there's many women. Notice that the plural is used, for the Bible says that the daughters of men of the city came out to draw water. Now he's, got, he's out here. Here's all these women coming out to get water, and he's going to pick one out. And he's going to say, eeny, meeny, miny, no, that's not the way you select one. He could have said, well, that's, that's pretty nice. That's an eight. Well, <laughs> that's a ten. That, that's the way most of us select, isn't it? We look on the outward appearance, but God says that he looks not on the outward appearance, but on the heart. But isn't it good that God also sometimes lets you get in on both of them? He gets one with a pure heart and a nice-looking face. Amen? And so he said, Lord, I want you to give me uh, the woman that you have selected. And here's how I want you to do it, God. When they're drawing water, I'm going to say to them, let me drink water from your pitcher. And they'll say, all right, you can have some water from my pitcher. And not only that, I'll draw water for your camels. Now, don't run past that, folks. That's important. And so when he says, Rebecca, he says, let me have some water. She says, okay. She brings the pitcher to him. He drinks. She says, and when you're through drinking, I'm going to draw water for your camels. Now, an average camel will drink five gallons of water. That's 10 camels, five gallons of water, 50 gallons. Now, I don't know how big her jug is, but she has to go yon yonder to the well, get it, bring it up here, pour it in the trough over and over and over and over again. What she's doing is that she's showing that not only is she a, a, a nice-looking woman, she's the one that God described or selected, but now she's got a heart that is willing to give and give and give. I mean, this is the kind of one that if anybody's going out looking for a wife, that's the kind they want. 
One that'll get up, cook, scrub, sew, and uh, all the other stuff. I mean, and just say, can I do something else for you, sir? I mean, that's the kind of woman that you want to get. The perfect uh, kind of lady, it would seem. And so he selects her. And then what he does, he pays a price for her. Notice the scripture says he puts bracelets on her arm, gives her an earring for her ear, and that may be a jewel, by the way. Instead of an earring, it could be translated a jewel for the foreign. But whatever he gives her, he gives her as sort of a down payment to say where this comes from, there's more to come. That's the diamond ring that you slip on her finger. Do you remember when you got yours, ladies? If you do, smile. If you remember when you gave it, say, oh, me, brothers. <laughs> I've told it before, but let me just tell it again. I remember when I gave my wife her diamond. It was one of the most meaningful days of my life. I, I mean this with all of my heart. And uh, I was in the military, and I'd, I'm the only man that ever bought a diamond ring on the, on the payment plan from the PX. And I, <laughs> I went down, and I, I made payments on it till I got it paid for and came home on and leave. It was Christmas time, and I was trying to be real suave, as, as uh, Gomer says. And uh, I, as I, we were alone in the home, fire in the fireplace, and lights were down low, real romantic. And, and I was trying to be real sweet, and I was sitting by her holding her hand and arm around her. And then I reached my hand down, slipped it in my pocket, and, and got that ring out and, and didn't ask, just took her hand and slipped it on her finger. Will you be my wife? She screamed like a Comanche. <laughs> she grabbed me, nearly squeezed the life out of me. I thought I'd die. <laughs> Kissed me like a vacuum cleaner stuck in it. the next room, got the phone, dialed a number, and her mother answered on the other end. She was visiting at, a, at an aunt's house, said, we got him, we got him, we got him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I embellished that story to say the least. <laughs> but I remember that day, and it was a good day, a grand day. But that was just part of it. That was the down payment. The marriage was yet to come. One day the Holy Ghost of God slipped up by my heart. He whispered the love of God in my ear and said, will you be mine? And when I gave him my heart, when I said, I will, he put a ring on my finger and he said, you are now part of the bride and just get ready for there's coming a day when I'm going to take you to the bridegroom's home. Just be ready when I come. He found her. He wooed her. He paid a price for her. He went to her house and he told them who he was and how he came to be there. And he said, can she go with me? They said, it's not our decision, it's hers. By the way, don't run past that either. Mama can't be saved for you. Daddy can't be saved for you. Brother can't be saved for you. It's your own decision. You must decide where you will spend eternity, either separated from God or with God. And it's all depends on what you do with Jesus today. And so he said, let me take her. She said, I'll go. And they said, let's just hang around here a while. Take about two weeks before you leave. Let us have some more parties. And he said, ain't no waiting around. I got a task to do. Get out of my way. The camel's train's leaving town tomorrow. And when the Holy Ghost 
gets the word from heaven and the father says to the son, it's time to get your bride. An angel from heaven is going to blow on a golden horn and the church is going to get up out of this place. There won't be any waiting behind to get a few more loved ones in, folks. We're out of here on the next train leaving town and we'll all go up to be with the Lord and be with him forever and forever.